Welcome to Headline News 24/7. Please click like and subscribe. Along the Great Divide. If you don't already know, there is a place called the Great Divide. It is the longest divide on Earth and synonymous with the Continental Divide of the Americas, running along the spine of the mountains from Alaska to South America. That, my friends, is our geography lesson for today because we are talking about another great divide in our country. This divide or division has two distinct sides to it and, lest you be naive enough to believe there's no division in this land of ours, keep reading. There is, on one side fact and on the other, emotion. On the one side is logic and on the other, false slash fake news. On the one side, people that love America, and on the other side, well, you'll have to decide about that for yourselves. What is clear, however, is that there is a division in America and that division has clearly separated people just as it did in the not-so-civil war aka the war between the states. Many people, if asked, will say that America is a democracy, which it is not. It is a democratic nation, but the truth of the matter is that we have a constitutional republic. That might not matter to a lot of folks, but there's a huge difference. A democracy, if you will, is three wolves and a sheep, deciding on what to have for supper. You want to guess how that works out? Democracy is simply that the majority rules, no matter the question before it. A constitutional republic is a republic that operates under a system of separation of powers, where both the chief executive and members of the legislature are elected by the citizens and must govern within an existing written constitution. It is that constitution, apparently singular among nations, with the exception of three, Ghana, Honduras, and India, that has kept America as the beacon of freedom throughout the world. Think of it, if America wasn't as great as I believe it is, why would so many people keep trying to get in, both legally and illegally? Sure, there are people here now, and others attempting entry, that have the destruction of the United States as their goal, but we're working on that. The wall, of which I approve heartily, will be a deterrent for a lot of would-be illegal entries. That wall, like many others around the world, is a division, or a border, between countries. Thousands of years ago, maybe millions, there were no countries, and so there were no borders. Once people began to congregate in or around an area they became a village, then a city, and finally a state or country. One only has to look at a map of the world to see these borders and how they divide one country from another. Without the borders, it would be just one huge landmass and, probably, there would still be wars because one area might covet something that the other area has. So, what have we gotten to? We are people divided, and those divisions, I believe, were introduced and nurtured by the previous administration. Once he was nominated, Hussein, that's his middle name, made the announcement that he was going to fundamentally transform America but he didn't mention to what. His endgame was the destruction of the United States and he almost succeeded. His administration brought about the empowerment of hooligans such as the Black Lives Movement, the appeasement of Iran by giving them, in cash, an undetermined amount of money, and let's not forget the Bo Bergdahl trade which was five top ISIS leaders for one traitor as soldier, and there's more, but you already know that. Speaking of Bergdahl, what is happening to him? He seems to have dropped off the face of the earth. We do know what happened to Bradley turned Chelsea Manning, he was pardoned even though he leaked classified information to WikiLeaks. Hussein also brought a divide to this country in an area that, in retrospect, seems incongruous to standard policies, allowing men into ladies' restrooms, because the man thinks or feels like a woman today. Have you ever heard of anything as ridiculous as that? You wake up one morning and say to yourself, today I'm going to be a member of the opposite sex because I feel that way. Be aware, though, you may run into opposition at some point. We finally have a man in the Oval Office who has the testicles to be there. A man who makes a promise and then keeps it. How original and refreshing is that? Oh, you hadn't guessed I was a trumpeter? I am and proud of it, frankly. Not everything he says is pure gold, I grant you that, but at least he backs up what he says, and that's good enough for me. That was the news. We thought you might be interested in knowing about this. Please click like and subscribe. Thank you.